Hi guys. I, I had an interesting morning this morning. A very interesting morning. Um, it was extremely interesting because when I started the video this morning, it didn't work. <laughs> so I was kind of try trying and I did and I did another video this morning, and I was almost late for church. It was just so crazy, because I woke up. <laughs> I woke up um, saying that I didn't want. I didn't want to preach this morning. I wanted to stay. I wanted to stay and watch movies. I wasn't going to preach, and I was griping about preaching. I had a word. But I was kind of feeling, um, kind of ungrateful, and, and I was like, I didn't want to preach this morning, not many people, um, watch me, so why do I have to preach? And the Lord said, you were called to do it, um, you need to be gr grateful for what you can do and others can't. You know how many people would kill to have the voice, to have the means, to have the tools, to have the smarts that you do to to preach like this? And he kind of rebuked me this morning. And don't get me wrong, it's an honor uh, to, to sit with you and, and dispose the word of God to you. But sometimes, um, even in your well-doing, it is so, um, it is so easy to get kind of discouraged and complacent, but the Lord said, don't forget what I put in you and what I called you to, because it's so, it's so easy to forget, um, what he put in us and what he called us to. And um, he said this, he said today, do not forget that. And he said, do not be weary in well-doing. Because so, sometimes when the promise is so long in coming, you get weary. Like you get weary just waking up every morning and doing what you do. He's like, don't get weary um, in well-doing. And my original sermon title was called The Beauty of Being Human. And my other sermon title I had from this morning was called Be Careful What You Pray For. Um, the Beauty of Being Human was about... Um, how people have four general needs to be seen, to be heard, to be accepted, and to be loved. Let me go over this again. To be seen, to be heard, to be accepted, and to be loved. Those are people's four general needs. And, um, uh, but the needs are not the problem. The problem is how you are meeting those needs. Because um, how you meet them is how you're going to continue meeting them. So if you meet that need for acceptance and to be seen and heard by, by putting uh, crazy videos on social media, that's how you are going to have to continue. And and when you do that and there is no uh and there is either no payoff or a superficial payoff, you just kind of feel drained. Even when you're doing uh, even when you're doing inspirational videos and you're doing it for the wrong reasons, you're doing it for likes, you're doing it for comments, you're doing it for, um, 
um, money, you're doing it for sex, you're doing it for all that stuff, and you're meeting the needs in that way, it's draining, and you just feel depleted. And the Lord's saying, there's no need to feel depleted. You need, you know, you need to know that what I put in you is enough. And he said, you need to start meeting those four basic needs through me. And the devil will fool you to say that what you do is not good enough. What you do is not worth it. What you do is just, you know, you're just fooling, fooling yourself. But that's a lie because the devil's the father lies. And what, what God has put in you today is so great, is so um, past your understanding um, that God will shock you with where he's going to take you. Um, but you. But you need to stop, first of all, be grateful. And you need to stop comparing yourself to the, to these other people and realize that there is greatness in your journey and God is taking you through the journey. And, and you're wondering uh, why why you were hidden? Well, God, God hides what is valuable to him. Um, nobody, nobody puts, like, um, thousands of dollars of jewelry out in the open for people to steal. We put it in what's called a safe, or we sometimes put it in a safe place with a lock and key. Why? Because it's valuable. Um, be the reason why you've been hidden is because you're valuable. The reason why you've been hidden is because you're valuable. And the Lord wants to say that um, some, in some cases, not in all cases, the reason why he has to keep you by yourself is because He's doing something in you that he wants no distraction. And you're wondering, don't I need people? Doesn't he like community? Yes, he does. But sometimes people go through seasons where um, the Lord will hide you, hide what's great inside of you because... Um, uh, the people around you are not called to see you. Uh, when Jesus was on, uh, when, when John was, when John was baptizing Jesus, um, and the Lord came down to Jesus and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Um, the reason why he couldn't let everybody see that is not because other people are stupid or other people didn't matter. It's because the Lord had a select few people uh, who were called to see them at, who were called to see Jesus at that level. See, he healed the multitude, but when he was in his real hour of need, he went with three people. And sometimes the Lord will hide you away just for a season, not because he hates you, not because he doesn't want you to have any friends, not because whatever, not because whatever you might be thinking, it is because 
what's in you is so valuable, beloved. He doesn't want what's in you to be tampered with or messed with. Um, and in his time, and only his time, he will bring along people with tools and resources and who can handle what's in you. And I'm not saying that people are bad. I'm just saying they're not called to... Um, to help you, and they may not understand. They may not be bad people, but they may, may not understand um, where you're going, and it may be hard to explain. And you may wonder why you're kind of hidden. Well, you're hidden, like I said, because you're valuable, and. He needs time to uh, take you through what he needs to take you through to give you the tools where you're going. So everything you're going through, whether good or bad or ugly, is preparing you for wherever God has uh, you to go next. And it's at, and it's. Uh, fortifying you for the journey and it's giving you tools that you need to, to do what only you are called to do and he said do not get distracted do not get distracted in the hiding get prepared he said now is the time to, to prepare now is the time to to get to work and to understand that the work you're getting to is actually his work. You are his hands and his feet, and he is um, he is working on you. He is getting you to the place where he wants you to be, and he. He wants you to know that you are seen, you are heard, you are accepted, and you are loved. And we want that from people, so we try and try. We put up all these videos. We we do things for people who like us. But first of all, we need to get that from God. And once we get it from God, God will put it in us so that we know that we are valuable, so that we know that we are His. Um, a lot of people say, look on the bright side, look on the bright side, or look on the upside, not the downside, look at the glass half full, not half empty. But for some of us, that, but that, those are con, those are great concepts. Don't get me wrong. But first, you need to look at the at the glass the way he sees it. So if you're having issues seeing the glass half full. You have to understand that as Christians, we see the glass the way God sees it, which is to the full till it overflows. He, he doesn't want us to see the glass half full or half empty. He wants it to be overflowing. He wants us to see it the way he does, uh, to the full, until it overflows. Um, he wants us to see uh, the glass overflowing with his living water. And the glass will overflow, and the glass is overflowing. 
He doesn't want to just give you one glass. He wants to give you a whole dishwasher full of glasses to, that are full and overflowing with his living water. And in his living water, his number one nutrient is grace. So, it, so in his living water, because we know in we know in the human body we are seventy percent water. So, <laughs> so if we were seventy percent water in our human body, and we need to replenish our human our human body daily with water, could you imagine? what we are spiritually if he's going to give us living water to the full till it overflows it's just awesome to think about so there like like i told you he wants to give you a whole dish of, a whole a whole trays full of water overflowing and the first nutrient he wants to put in the water is his grace. So the nutrient of grace is one thing that will nourish you and that will keep you moving forward. The other nutrient is his love. And that's another thing that will nourish you. There is nothing when you're going through uh, hell on your job or, or with your friends or with your colleagues, there's nothing that restores you more than knowing the God of this great universe, the God that created all the galaxies, loves you. It just makes you want to cry because you know what kind of person you are. You know, you know how um, you just are just totally ratchet sometimes, and to know that his love is uh, one of the nutrients that nourishes you, along with his grace, is so wonderful. And the other nutrient he wants to put in your water, his forgiveness. He wants you to know whatever you've done, whoever you are, wherever you are, that you are forgiven today. And forgiveness is not like, oh, I can do what I want, I forgive it. No, forgiveness is a fortifier. Because I'm forgiven, I can stand strong. I can be great. I can stand in not my own power, not my own faith, not my own strength, but I can stand in his. We're uh, under the mistaken impression that we have to look at the bright side or we have to be strong or we have to have faith. We don't. When we take on Christ, we take on his strength, his positivity, his joy, and his faith. It all comes from him uh, through us. So you don't have to be positive. Just ask for his level of positivity for your life. You don't have to be loving. Just ask for his love for your life, and that love will extend from you, from him, to you, and will overflow to others. And you, like, it all comes from him through us. See, I think as human beings, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. I need to be positive. I need to be more of this. I need to be more of that. 
But um, we have to understand that he is the writer. We are just the pen. We don't have control. We do have responsibility to carry out what he's instructed, but we don't have to do it alone. And we don't have to uh, hold so tight to the reins that we think we have control. We don't. The control is his. And he wants... And he wants his love, his grace, and his forgiveness to come from him through us, not only to help us, but to overflow to others. So basically, because he is love, it comes from him through us to others and when I think of the nourishment of water when you drink uh, the doctor says that we need to have eight glasses of water a day eight eight ounce glasses of water a day I have I have issues with this <laughs> I totally do I, I'm trying my best, but I'm so, I'm so bad at this. Um, but because when it comes out, when we go to the bathroom and the water comes out that we don't need, the body needs rep replenishment. Um, so in the physical so it is in the natural so we need to replenish his grace and his love and and his forgiveness and how do we replenish just asking just just seeking him for his forgiveness not only for our lives but for others lives as well because when it comes from him through us it overflows onto others so like we often say lord fill me but my new prayer from today is fill me so that i can then uh pour out uh to to others and back to you so it's a reciprocal kind of thing um this is just wonderful <laughs> this is uh just a, uh uh this is wonderful what the lord's uh showing me today um so guys thank you so much for hanging with me and being with me today. I really appreciate you. And and for those of you who are just striving and doing, doing your best and wanting to know when it's going to come the Lord said, hold tight. Don't give up. Don't be weary and well-doing. It doesn't matter if people see you or or uh, love you or understand what you do. Just keep going. Just keep going because in due season, you will reap if you think not. And the Lord says today, Due season is coming. He said that for somebody, not for everybody. And due season is coming. Often we we're just like, when when's my due season? When's my due season? And when the preacher say, says due season is coming, we think it's for everybody. But often when you're preaching, 
it's not for everybody. It could be a couple people in the room. It could be a word for the house. It could be for um, a number of reasons why God has a preacher say a certain word. But that word is for somebody. Due season is coming for somebody listening to me today. And you've been striving, you've been really cheering on other people, and sometimes other people have gotten what you wanted, and and you just um, celebrated them, and just put your arms around them, although internally you're saying, when's my turn, turn when's my due season? And the Lord is saying right now to somebody, your due season is coming. To other people, he's saying, your due season is here. And you'll say, how do I know that whether my new season is coming or whether my new season is here? Um, my answer is, you'll feel it in your spirit. You'll feel with whatever resonates with you in your spirit. That's why I said uh, it's important to get in a rhythm with God because then you know what word is for you and what word is for somebody else. Because the difficult thing about preaching is that there's so many people that will be watching you and there's so many people in so many different situations uh, that there, it's impossible to preach to everybody in every situation. But he knows what everybody needs in every situation. And the word I'm giving will resonate with somebody this way. It will resonate with a person another way. And he's just saying that... Um, it will come to pass. And he's saying, there's no need to be jealous. There's no need to be envious of another person because your due season uh, will be your due season. And for those of you who have tried and strived and uh, had character and integrity, and genuinely celebrated with others when they've got what you what you wanted. He say in your due season because for those of you who have been uh, who have been um, who have had a lack of integrity and and have um, j just treated people awfully he's saying even for you forgiveness is available he's saying forgiveness is available honey there's no need to begrudge her her fiance because you haven't had a date in two years the lord's saying it's time for you to celebrate and not hate don't begrudge somebody their success because you have no idea what they did to get it, what they went through. You see one thing on Facebook, but you don't know the daily grind, the daily struggle, the doubt, the fear, the pain that they have to do to, to, to just get up every, every day and do what they do. You think it looks easy because you see it on Instagram, you see their posts on Facebook, you see their posts on Instagram, and it looks easy, but it's far from easy. Don't hate, celebrate, and then when you'll, when you'll celebrate, the, when you sit and celebrate others in due season, in your time, in God's time, he will ex Exalt, exalt, exalt you. But if you continue to hate and celebrate, that will keep you down. 
God is not what's holding you back. You and your attitude towards others, towards people, um, that's what's holding you back. Your attitude and how, how, how you're treating people is breaking God's heart. And he's saying there's forgiveness available. And when you can genuinely be, be happy for someone, even though you you're not at at that level yet, that's when the Lord will see um, your character and promote you. Character is key. Talent can only take you so far, but character will keep you there. In this season. The Lord is looking for character. The Lord is looking for integrity. The Lord is trying to vanquish the crab mentality. When you get up, other people try and pull you down. That attitude is not of God. It's of the devil. And it's been per pervading the church and the world for too long. When you when you've gotten to a certain status, people try and pull you down and try and move you. Let me say this. People cannot move you from where God has put you, but your attitude can not withhold, but your attitude can make it harder uh, for God to do what he's purpose to do in your life. So, if you have a bad attitude, like I said, ask for his attitude about your situation. The Lord's saying, ask for my attitude about the situation. And my, and my attitude about the situation will filter down through you and come out to others. So thank you, Lord, for your word. I, I really appreciate it. And thank you, Lord, for being with me on the journey this morning. It was really harrowing to even get this video done. Thank you. And I will never take for granted again the privilege that you have given me. And I'm so grateful. Thanks so much, Lord. I'll see you next week. All being well. Bye. Only I have no son against to face on your time. So fair, I chase my hands away. I will ride up to now. It's a little day that shows me how. Well, Sorry, I got the 80s in my head. And the Lord's saying, you're saying you want 
a few weeks ago, I did something about about dancing in the dark, and the Lord saying, "You say you want resources, and you're so busy looking towards people." And you're saying you want to get in partnership or you want to dance with somebody with resources. So you're striving, you're even using nefarious means to get into that, um, get into that club or get with those friends or get with those people. Um, the Lord's saying you don't need to do that. You just need to dance with me. You want to dance with somebody who loves you and accepts you. He's like, before you look to human beings, you need to get it um, through from me, and I'll put it through you, and you can spread it to other people. So instead of having a crab mentality, oh, I need to get with these friends, or I need to do this to get in this business partnership, um, get it from God, and then He will um, do it through you, and that through you will extend to other other people. And you're saying you want to, because He's saying if you want to dance with somebody, the first person you dance with is me. before you dance with anyone else, before you dance with a man, before you before you dance with business partners or get into uh, business deals that are not right or before you do something that is not right. Um, ask for ask for my wisdom on that circumstance and I, I will give you my wisdom, and that wisdom will spread through people. You've been doing it on your own for too long, and it's not been going well. And you, you've even flirted with um, a lack of integrity or doing something that's a bit not, not together, right? It's not all the Lord saying, it's not all the way wrong, but you know it's not altogether right. The Lord's saying to stop that. I see you. I know what you're about to do, and don't do it. You know it's not um, a pers what a person of integrity should do, but you're you're desperate, and the Lord's saying. I know you're desperate to get with those friends, to get in those business uh, relationships, she's saying, but don't. And the Lord is um, now talking uh, to a bunch of teenagers. She's saying, there are friends that you want to get into, and you're dying to be part of that clique, that club, but you know what they do is is not of integrity and you're just wondering well maybe if i do it a bit it's it's not gonna it's not gonna cause me harm i'm telling you beloved it is going to cause you harm it is going to cause you harm in your 20s harm in your 30s harm even when when you're that, that, um, even now when you're 15 or when you're 14, picking on that person, bullying that person, may get you in the club for a while, but it'll compromise your character. Do nothing, beloved, that will compromise your character. I don't care what the payoff seems to me, but um, there, but it will turn out to nothing. The Bible says 
there is a way that seems right onto a person, but the end thereof is death. Some of, there's a teenager on the sound of my voice under the sound of my voice right now that you're you're flirting with death right now, and the Lord's saying to stop it, make a better choice, make a better decision. Because what you're flirting to do right now will end up in death. It doesn't seem like that, but it will end up in spiritual death, emotional death, maybe even physical death. Make another choice. There is somebody in business right now that the Lord is saying to uh, there is a business partnership that you are about to get into that is kind of not shady, but it seems like to have kind some kind of iffy parts that your spirit goes, um, no, this doesn't seem right, and you're still flirting with doing it. Don't do it. Don't do it. If there's something in your spirit that sets off an alarm, don't do it. The Lord, um, the, the world calls it intuition, instinct, but the, but the Lord calls it the spirit. And the spirit is there to set off an alarm. And the Holy Spirit now is telling you not to get involved with those people in business. It doesn't matter what the projections say on paper or what other people around you are telling you what to, to do. If there's any doubt in your spirit, that's the Lord telling you no. Because he knows what he has for you. He knows where he's taking you. And that business, this partnership is not what he has for you. He has much greater, he has much better for you than you could ever imagine. Just hold tight and do what's right always. Operate with integrity and character and it will take you more places than you will have ever dreamed of. Always integrity. Always character. Always kindness. Manipulation won't get you anywhere. It'll get you short-term gratification, but in the end will be death. Operate with integrity. Operate with character always. You're not perfect. Nobody is. But of, of, when you make a mistake, don't try and cover it. Don't try and lie about it. Be up front of the and said, and said, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Be a person of integrity. And forgiveness and integrity can start right now. Forgi forgiveness is available for you right now. All you have to do is ask for it. So guys, I will see you later. Take care. Dancing with the devil will only get you strife and pain. But dancing with Jesus will make you whole again. Take care.